brand new research shows that a specific fiber burns fat, partially mimics a ketogenic diet, and can contribute to weight loss. Now, this is not your run-of-the-mill granola or chia seed. And if you're here expecting a gimmicky shopping list of your top 10 fat-burning foods, you're going to be disappointed. But if you are receptive to having your expectations broken and mind awoken, then let's digest these data together. Now, the fat fiber feces story I'm going to tell you is based on new 2025 preclinical studies published in Cell Metabolism, where mice were given a fiber complex called acetylated cellulose, or a cell for short. Now, what is a cell? A cell is the short chain fatty acid acetate bound to the fiber cellulose. Perhaps you've heard of short chain fatty acids before. These are little fats between two and four carbons long. Include acetate, which is two carbons, propionate, which is three carbons, and butyrate, which is four carbons. Basically, the short kings of the fat world. Now, in human randomized double blinded controlled trials, acetate administration to the colon has been shown to improve a vast array of metabolic parameters. But there's a catch. If you just eat acetate, it won't make it all the way to the colon. In the human studies I was referring to, acetate is delivered through a long feeding tube, which does not sound fun. Therefore, as much as you might want to deliver acetate to your colon by simply eating it, you can't. Trying to get acetate to your colon by eating it is kind of like bowling on a slanted alley. Every roll is a gutter ball. But a cell, this acetylated cellulose complex, is like walking up with a baseball bat and clearing the pins. Whack. Strike. Now, in this study, a cell allowed acetate to escape absorption in the small intestine and increased acetate levels in the colon, whereas a control acetate sodium solution did not. And impressively, you ready? A cell fiber, shown here in green, caused a significant weight loss relative to mice given a control diet with or without alternative forms of acetate, the acetate sodium solution. A cell also decreased liver mass and led to a trending decrease in body fat. And these findings were then replicated in another group of genetically distinct obese mice. And the findings were found to be specific to A cell and did not occur when mice were given cellulose complex with the other short chain fatty acids, propionate or butyrate. So I know that was a lot of words, a lot of jargon. Let's pause for a quick summary of what we learned so far. A cell delivers acetate to the colon, which suppresses weight gain. The next question is obviously how? How does a cell contribute to weight loss? What is the mechanism? Well, the mechanism the researchers discovered operates as follows. I'm gonna give you six steps. A cell effectively delivers acetate to the colon. A cell alters the microbiome to increase levels of bacteroides species of bacteria that ferment and metabolize simple sugars. This decreases the availability of sugars to the host, the mouse, or in theory, you. After this, liver glycogen is depleted because you're not uptaking as much sugar, partially mimicking fasting or a ketogenic diet. Then as a compensatory response, genes involved in fat burning, fatty acid oxidation, the molecular process, they're increased. And the net effect is improvements in fatty liver, fat burning, and weight loss. And if you want more methodological details and walk through some of the graphs from the paper, you can see the associated Stay Curious Metabolism newsletter at staycuriousmetabolism.com for more details. But now, just to reframe the mechanism, and what we've learned so far in as simple terms as I can. ACE cell acts like a Trojan horse for acetate, sneaking it past early digestion and releasing it into the deep colon. Once there, the acetate reshapes the microbial landscape, favoring the growth of certain sugar metabolizing bacteria. Then these bacteria, these microbes, consume simple sugars before your body can absorb them decreasing the sugar availability to the host, and this forces the body to drain liver glycogen and triggers metabolic adaptations that kind of resemble fasting or a ketogenic state. 
And as a result, your body basically flips into fat burning mode, upregulates the genes needed to oxidize, burn fatty acids. And the ultimate outcome? Less liver fat, more fat burned, and measurable weight loss, at least in mice. All initiated by a smart delivery of a simple molecule, acetate, to the right place, your colon. So the bottom line here, a cell is not just another fiber. It's a precision tool in production, a prebiotic likely in the process of human clinical trials as we speak. But admittedly, since you can't get a cell available today, I now want to provide you with some hot tips to potentially boost your microbiome's ability to produce acetate and reap its rewards. Again, details and references can all be found in the associated newsletter, which I've linked below. But to begin, one, I want to talk about acetogenic fibers. So to avoid confusion, let me just reinforce that the cellulose fiber component of a cell acts as a delivery vehicle for the acetate, but the acetate is generated or consumed exogenously from outside the body. However, other fibers are acetogenic, meaning they can be fermented by gut bacteria into acetate inside your body. And chief among these is inulin. Now, the best dietary sources of inulin include chicory root at number one, with other great sources being Jerusalem artichokes, onions, garlics, leeks, and asparagus. Therefore, consuming these foods could boost the microbiome's production of acetate, your microbiome's production of acetate. Now, with that said, I want to introduce an important caveat. The amount of acetate produced by your gut microbiome in response to acetogenic fibers like inulin will depend on the particularities of the community to which you play host. We are all individuals, so you're going to get a different bang for your buck depending on what microbiome you have. Anyway, moving on, acetate-producing bacteria, which actually builds on that because it may be possible to enrich your gut in acetate producers. There are several. But Acromancia mucinophilia is one acetate producer that can be found in the human microbiome and has been quite studied. Acromancia mucinophilia levels in humans are already known to be positively associated with circulating acetate levels because it produces acetate and negatively associated with blood glucose and waist to hip ratio. Overall, if you take a broad scope of the literature, Acromancia mucinophilia is associated with a healthier metabolic profile in humans, which may be due at least in part, to its ability to produce the short-chain fatty acid acetate. Now, the following interventions based on a combination of animal or human studies are thought to increase Acromancia mucinophilia levels. Some are pretty basic, but I still want to list them. First, reducing or eliminating alcohol intake. Second, avoiding a high-sugar, high-fat, high-processed food Western dietary-style pattern. Third, I'll be a little bit careful here, but the first-line diabetes medication, metformin, has consistently been shown in animal studies to increase acromancia mucinophilia. Of course, this is not meant to be medical advice. Do not get your medical advice off YouTube. However, I do raise it because it's a consistent finding in the preclinical literature and a popular medication in the growing longevity space. And finally, for, kind of quirkily, rhubarb extract has shown some promise in preclinical studies for increasing acromancia mucinophilia levels. This might be related to an anthroquinone pigment that the rhubarb contains, but the jury's still out and more human trials are needed. Now, finally, three, vinegar, by which I mean acetic acid. Vinegar is a rich dietary source of acetic acid. Now, while this form of acetate won't make it en masse to your colon, Orally administered acetic acid can still have health benefits, including weight loss when taken as apple cider vinegar in some human randomized controlled trials. Now, in one of the most impressive RCTs on apple cider vinegar I've seen, they took subjects and gave them one teaspoon to one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar containing 5% acetic acid for 12 weeks. And this led to weight loss in a dose and time dependent manner, as well as improvements in body fat, blood glucose, and triglycerides. So, in addition to attempting to increase colonic production of acetate through acetogenic fibers, remember inulin, and microbiome support, you can still reap the rewards of acetate when taken orally, 
I know, a little bit of plot twist, right? If you can handle a shot of apple cider vinegar. Now, as a protocol, here's what I'd suggest. Here's what I do. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar taken about 30 minutes or less before meals. This will time the acetate peak in your blood to the ingestion of food and could give you some of acetate's benefits while ACEL still remains in clinical trials. But in conclusion, on this ACEL fiber acetate complex in the primary study that we discussed, what this research teaches us is not that fiber matters so simply, that's a whole separate kettle of fish, but that fiber can be reimagined, reinvented, and repurposed for much more than boring, bulking stool. Now, if you want to bulk your brain, click subscribe. And subscribe to my Stay Curious Metabolism newsletter to get extra details and early access to these forms of data. Stay curious, and I look forward to your questions and comments. Peace.